Hello everyone. In this video, we will be discussing about India's semiconductor failure or how India failed to acquire its predominance in the semiconductor market in the global market. We, as we all know that there are still no fabrication labs in India because there are some challenges that are being faced by companies to set up fab labs in India. First of all, the government is not supporting the construction and the implementation by giving some certain funding to these companies for creating the fabs in India. And there are uh, several multiple factors also, like the secondary factors that include, uh, first of all, the fab labs include a large number of water supply, a constant electric uh, current, and uh, skilled labor, and a proper infrastructure. These things are lacking in India, uh, except the skilled labor, because India is very enriched in skilled labor, and particularly in VLSI domain. And it's also difficult to compete with the neighboring countries like China and Vietnam, where the global chip market is very much fully, uh, one can say fully controlled by these two countries uh, in the whole world. There were uh, several attempts in the past. Uh, some companies like HSMC, Hindustan Semiconductor Manufacturing Corporation, uh, which was a consortium of companies that included ST Microelectronics and Siltera, uh, based in Malaysia for uh, acquiring, a, for starting a project in Gujarat of worth of 30,000 crore. But the government in 2019 canceled the letter of the intent granted to HSMC. And now there is no such proposal from any private company to initiate such a project. First of all, one thing must be understand that the fab labs require a very high amount of funding in billion dollars. And this much funding alone cannot be worked out by some private company. The government has also implemented some rules and some secondary donations to these companies for setting up fabs in India. Another attempt which was made by the Jay Prakash Associates uh, back in 2016, which was uh, in cooperation with IBM and Tower Semiconductor uh, based in Israel to start a chip manufacturing in UP. But again, it, was, uh, it went debt written and the JP Associates pulled out uh, um, offer of 34,000 if the two only private sector consortium cleared by the government to establish a large scale chip manufacturing in the country uh, that only could be possible if it were not bank ridden or the, it was not debt ridden. And uh, from the government ventures, the SCL or the semiconductor laboratory, SCL has origin as its semiconductor complex limited, which is a public sector undertaking PSU by the Indian government. It came under the administrative control of Department of Space in 2005, and its basic main work is to R&D department, uh, mainly for space and research development. And uh, this R&D uh, develop has, has developed about 3 micron, 2 micron, 1.2 micron, and 0.8 micron CMOS technologies, uh, which are uh, not according to market standards as of current scenario, but uh, they were at a certain point of time back uh, in 2010 and 15 but they still couldn't evolve as a technological uh, dominance as uh, due to the competitors like Intel and uh, TSMC. And their specialized technologies include uh, e square PROM and CCD. SCL has over the years developed and supplied a number of key VLSI majorities of which have been a part of ASICs, which has been reliable and industrial applications. SCL also manufactures 22 nanometer Shakti microprocessors, which were designed and developed uh, by the IIT Madras as uh, students and professors. The fab upgrade of uh, SCL was uh, initiated and or uh, planned by the DOS, Department of Science, to produce chips of 0.18 micrometer size of the current 0.8 micrometers. Starting in 2010, SCL has upgraded to 8 inch vapor fab to produce chips of 0.18 micrometer CMOS process as made available by the Tower Research, the Tower Semiconductor Israel. But again, this is not of uh, market standard uh, because nowadays uh, TSMC has gone down to like a channel length of around three uh, nanometer. And uh, Samsung has even gone down to around 3.5 nanometer, which is almost the size of a DNA. But uh, while SCL has uh, still been producing about uh, 180, micrometer, uh, 180 nanometer technology, which is uh, not at all to the micro standard. So, these technology uh, developments have been up to the market standards. So what are the hurdles like uh, for setting up the fab lab and to ensure that the technology is up to date in the global market? First of all, that it requires a massive investment. This alone cannot be run by the companies or the private players itself, but the government has to play its role in it. And uh, second of all, uh, apart from the huge cost, 
manufacturing chips requires gallons of pure water so a particular place where there is availability of pure water has to be ensured for the uh, fabrication companies to set up their plant and uh, an uninterrupted power supply is yet another major hurdle and the uh, heart of the issue in india is still not far at the basic infrastructure needed to pursue endeavors in the chip manufacturing space moreover uh, the price pressure from the global market players like uh, particularly in countries like china and uh, taiwan which is a uh, homegrown chip grown for the adoption of local semiconductors in 70% of its products by 2025 so india's main problem is that the ch- price of chip is cannot be reduced as that of china's products and uh, therefore the global market is always predominated by the chinese companies so what are the opportunities ahead uh, l- latest news include that the tata group is uh, making its foray or making its entry into the semiconductor manufacturing and it is planning to set up a business to seize the opportunity again the vedanta group which is emerged as a highest bidder for videocon is also looking for the semiconductor industry for a possible foray and uh, moreover the biggest uh, news is up to date is that uh, officials in new delhi and taipei have met in recent words to discuss a deal that would bring a chip plant worth an estimated of 7.5 billion dollars in india to supply everything from 5g devices to electric cars so as as likely more job opportunities are uh, going to occur in this uh, domain in the upcoming years moreover uh, the indian government has uh, given some uh, facilities to the some indian institutes and indian companies to upgrade their uh, technological nodes in the semiconductor domain for example uh, indian government has considered a 2500 rupees crore feasible for the gallium nitride study at the iisc bangalore and uh, there are moreover several startup uh, companies like signal chip and sankhya labs are coming out which is set up in bangalore and uh, for uh, the defense and satellite based communication and broadcast another one microprocessor called shakti developed by iit madras which can be used in mobile computing devices embedded low power wireless systems like smartphones surveillance cameras and networking systems so the final overview is that with the rising demand for electronics india is large net importer of uh, semiconductor chips Moreover, experts says that India is spending more money on import of semiconductor than on oil. Thus, uh, if India could become like self-dependent on the man, uh, manufacturing of semiconductor chips, then a lot of GDP will come from this domain, and Indian government will be highly benefited from this. Moreover, the several factors that uh, has, one has to be kept in mind for setting up fab labs has also to be ensured by the government and the private players to set up a fabrication lab in India, because uh, the country is uh, like filled with several uh, talents which can easily take over this semiconductor domain and could compete the uh, competitors uh, countries like china and taiwan so that's all thank you